Things Unsaid, Episode 3, Scheduling. You've reached Paige Gilbert. You know what to do with the beep, but let me know if there's a better way to get back to you. AP is dead. Just got to the airport. I'll be there to pick you up, so just text me when you land. I got the receipt from the storage place, so I take it they didn't give you or Brooke a hard time. And, before I forget, I spoke to Elise Baum this morning. She made lasagna for us. Hey, lasagna, hey, lasagna, lasagna. <laughs> I think her wife's department has some internships opening that might be in your wheelhouse. Think about it, and let me know if you want me to ask about that. See you soon. All right. I arrived in Missoula, and it was only about a 45-minute drive until I was home. Dad picked me up by the baggage claim. Hopefully this is all I'll need this summer, but I think I might miss some of my clothes. Dad said I shouldn't plan on being here long, because he thinks Mom will walk in the door any moment. Cole says I'm being too girly complaining about clothes, because he's 16 and also a punk. I want to be prepared to go walking and to look for Mom. And I also have to be ready if... I just want to be prepared. I can set up some notes there and see what else she left behind. Dad was kind of confused when I asked him to set out all the rest of her old journals, but now I can see more of the full story. He put them in boxes in the basement, and I've already begun sorting them as soon as I got back. But for the sake of the recordings, I'll just put everything chronologically. Which brings us to... Start Week 4. Labor Day came early, or at least it feels that way. I know it's always in the first week of September, but sometimes those two or three days can make a difference. So we're already back to the grind. It's senior year, though, so I'm almost there. Oh, Mom. So sweet. So naive. I've got a pretty packed schedule for senior year, so I'll probably just list my classes right here. Should I really read this out? It can't be super important. Uh, While she has notes that look relevant, I might as well. Hour 1. Homeroom, which I think is home ec now that we're seniors. Hour 2. AP Literature. Hour 3. AP Gov. This is Mr. Jones' class, so we'll see how that goes. Hour 4. School Paper. Hour 5. This is normally where people have foreign language, but I obviously can't learn something else. I guess this will be when they try to improve my lip reading. Corey knows I'm probably as good as I'll get at that, and I still have to wear hearing aids. Hearing aids? And I still have to wear hearing aids in classes, so it'll basically be study hall. Maybe studio artwork? Hour 6. AP Chem. Not as many practical reactions as one would hope, but gotta get those science credits. Hour 7. Off. So, except when the schedule rotates, go home early. Jones, the gov teacher, doesn't let Corey into class, because he says the other students get distracted. God forbid people don't treat him like the sun. It'll be equal treatment if he gives me his lecture notes at the start of each class, and I knew my readings like a good girl. Ugh. Then he talks about my big blue eyes being able to take everything in without hearing aids. It's AP U.S. history all over again, and whatever world history I took freshman year. Corey informed me I once again have no new deaf students in my school. Just me and Rob, a kid in sophomore year. He's sweet, but we don't really interact all that much. Especially once he got involved in swimming. I'll check up on him, see how his summer went, but my friends are getting better at sign every day, so I have people to talk to. And he has lots of friends on the swim team. I know because all the deaf high schoolers meet up about once a month. Enough to see people we relate to, but not so much that we have a friendship forced on us. Corey arranged the whole thing, which was really very thoughtful of her to do on her own time. Corey? Who the heck was Corey? Wait, I think Mom mentioned her to me when I asked what high school was like. She was Mom's interpreter, and the other deaf kids too. 
they only had three interpreters for the whole school district. One for elementary, junior, and high school. Mom said she was on another level juggling all those classes. And this Mr. Jones wouldn't let her interpreter into class? Wasn't that illegal by her senior year of high school? Also, I didn't realize mom had hearing aids on a regular basis. She never used them in my life, and I think she hated them by the time she got to college. Since we have other deaf family members, Grandma and Grandpa James were able to adjust to using ASL with her. Jesus, no wonder mom talks shit about her history teacher all the time. Sorry, no swearing. And the thing about her eyes is straight up creepy. I can't imagine a teacher who would force a kid to use hearing aids. No, no, I definitely can. Continuing on. I got all my supplies set up and my locker is in a good spot, right between the art studio and the chem labs, and I have a feeling I'll be spending all my time bouncing between those two places. I went down the street to Maggie's and we have a fair amount of classes together. Not in studio, obviously, but she'll be a lifesaver in chem. We wanted to see what Sarah Marie was up to, but we didn't get around the block to her house, because Mark Gonzalez is moving. He's the one with the messed up tattoo. Mark didn't tell anyone, as far as we could see. Ethan Piero was there because he's Mark's best friend. Ethan didn't seem quite as surprised as the rest of us, so maybe he got some prior warning. But he was definitely upset as he helped Mark with moving some final possessions. Mark and his mother already had everything in boxes in the yard, and they were loading up the station wagon. They even had a U-Haul. Mark just hugged us when he saw Maggie and I shell-shocked at the end of his driveway. He said his dad got a job near D.C. or something? To be honest, I forgot he had a dad, because that guy works away so often. They were going so fast, I don't even think they were waiting for his dad to come home that evening. There's a story there, but that one's not my business. I'm going to miss that guy, even when he was doing dumb things like getting tattoos as soon as he could. What? Ugh. Coming. I'm coming. Hey, Dad? No, this is Erin Altamirano from high school. Miss Summer's English class. Oh. Oh, of course. Hi, Erin. I'm sorry, I must have lost your number somewhere along the line. Don't worry about it. I don't think we ever traded numbers in school, to be honest. Listen, I heard through the grapevine that you were flying back home, and I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. We're all really worried about your mom. Thanks. Thanks, that means a lot. No one else from school has called me. Well, most of them moved away, I guess. They probably didn't even know. Still, I was hoping to hear from a few more people. Not that I'm unhappy you called, of course. Are you living in town? Community college and working at the doghouse, actually. I'm working right now, and, and your brother left his planner. That's why I called. This was the number inside. Oh, weird. I'll text him to pick it up after practice. Sounds good. Hey, come on by sometime, and I'll give you a free coffee. I will almost certainly take you up on that. For you, I'll even wash the mugs first. That was a joke. You can laugh if you'd like. Oh, sorry. It took no, no, it's thing. totally fine. It really wasn't that funny. No, I, I get just, it. I thought you could use a laugh. Um, I gotta admit, now when I heard you were back home, I realized I'm not even sure where you go for school. That's okay. I'm attending college back east, studying pre-law. Oh, that's cool. Uh, criminal or contract? I don't have to decide that until post-grad, really, but I'm more interested in criminal law. No surprise there. How's that? Well, with your mom being a journalist, it just seems fitting. Like a TV show. A mother-daughter crime show? If your brother becomes a cop and your dad becomes a judge, it would be an overnight hit. Ha! As fun as that sounds, I can't begin to tell you how easy it would be for a defendant to get a mistrial. If the cop, journalist, lawyer, and judge were all related. Well, that's why you're studying law, and I'm in the doghouse. You said you were attending community college? I'm studying sustainable community planning and environmental sciences. That's actually cool as all hell. I'm glad you think so. And I got enough scholarships that I can pay my own way with work at the doghouse and living with mom and dad. That's amazing. I love college, but I'm going to have some debt for sure. If you become a lawyer, I'm sure you won't have to worry about it for too long. Eh, that's the hope. So, listen, I don't know what the plan is to find your mom, but I want you to know that if you need help with the search, with anything, I want to help. Thank you. I don't know if I'm going to be the one to tell, but if the detective says you can help, I'll definitely reach out. Well, for anything, too. Even if you just want to talk. 
being back here in the middle of the semester must be hard, but I never left, so maybe hearing about me being stuck here will make you feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might. Tell you what, I'll come down to the doghouse once I feel settled in, and we can finish catching up when your shift ends. That sounds great! Looking forward to it. Me too. Goodbye. Bye. Did Erin and I talk at all in school? Maybe once or twice in English class, but she was always so shy. I wonder if I've changed that much too. What was I doing? Oh, uh, where was I? Mark was not... Even when Mark was doing dumb things like getting tattoos and not taking care of them, he was a big help in my classes. Plus, he made covering band a lot easier by teaching me to keep time. I only wanted to prove I could do band freshman year. And when I got into studio artwork, it was really fun to write my reflections with him. Corey appreciated the lunch break freshman and sophomore year with all the music and art I was doing. She'll never forgive me for packing my schedule with more academic classes. But I'm not taking any more than the average student at Bozeman High. And she knows that, so she isn't really mad at me. Oh, but she will be if she has to interpret Mrs. Sutaro yelling at me for not doing my first home ec assignment. I'll get started. End week, week four. four. Corey seems really cool. The high schools in the district aren't all that close. I know one of them takes kids all the way out to the Crow Reservation and the Wyoming border. That's a huge area of people. There's no way she could have interpreted for all those kids herself. Well, the high schools themselves are all less than 15 minutes from each other. I don't even think Rocky had opened yet anyway. Actually, let me look this up. Corey ASO local. Oh, perfect. She's in the news. Looked like she retired about two years ago. I think I remember mom going to her retirement party. The whole family went, actually, but I was taking spring finals. Shoot, she moved away when she retired. I would have contacted her. If anyone could reflect on mom at this age, it would be her. I wonder if the kids met at the old rec center. It was gutted about five years ago for renovations, so... Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Cole used to go to those meetings. I would drop him off at the senior center by the gym before he got his license. We would hold each other accountable that way. He'd do his monthly socializing slash relating to his own culture. I would do my monthly exercise. Not nearly as impressive on my end. But mom would ask Cole how Corey was doing all that time. Corey must have kept those meetings organized all the way up until she retired. That's amazing. I knew mom was a strong student. She's always been a smart woman. First person to go to when essays need to be edited. And Cole says last person to go to on a time crunch. She has lots of edits. That reminds me, Cole should be home from school soon. I'm going to text him for when he gets here. Uh, and everything about Aaron, too. There. Maybe he knows something Dad or I don't. Maybe Mom said something to him before she left. Now I know I'm losing it. What teenage boy notices anything? Ever. He probably didn't question Mom not coming home until the police showed up. And he had lots of baseball practice lately, too. I just... I have to just stay optimistic, yeah? Because mom just can't be gone. She had no reason to up and leave. She has a great job at the paper. Her and dad seemed fine. I'd say she was kidnapped. Adult-napped? This isn't the time for jokes. Ugh. There was no sign of a struggle. Not even a mess. It's like someone cleaned up after themselves. That's probably why dad was the one who freaked out immediately. That's a spooky thing to come home to. An empty but clean house. But it's been a week now. I'll admit, before I got here, even I had thought he was randomly getting controlling about mom being out of the house. But now that I'm here, I can tell it's different. There's something in the atmosphere, like the central cooling is afraid to start in case it's too loud. Jesus. The detective and his police made a mess of our home. To add insult to injury, we couldn't even keep the house clean because of the detective and his team. It's hard to feel relaxed in a home that is required to still look like a crime scene for the foreseeable future. I mean, really, though? You'd think cops would have the courtesy to wipe their feet on the mat. If Dad hadn't told me otherwise, I'd say all the footprints just look like the scene of a massive fight. But no, it's just careless inspectors and CSI and God knows who else has been traipsing through here. I hope they stayed out of my room. I'll go get settled in and cleaned up just in case. Things Unsaid is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. 
This episode of Things Unsaid was written by Julia Wallach. It was directed by Annie Dillon. The part of Paige Gilbert is played by Julia Wallach. The part of Don Gilbert is played by A.C. Ace McCarthy. The part of Aaron Altamirano was played by Isabel Gray. Music, sound design, and editing by Daniel Farrell. 